can you imagine growing up in the largest habitat on Earth? The open ocean can be an intimidating and dangerous place. You might find safety at school with your friends, or seek shelter in a sanctuary like Cocos Island Marine Reserve. But while an island or seamount might be a haven for adult turtles and sharks, one thing we don't see a lot of out here are babies. So where do these animals come from? Where do they begin their migratory journey? The answer lies back on the mainland. Hammerhead sharks and other pelagic sharks, such as tiger sharks, even though they live out there in the high seas, they come to these coastal habitats to have their pups. These mangrove swamps provide habitats where they can be protected. There's also lots of caves and little areas where they can hide inside the roots of the mangroves. So it's a perfect rookery for these animals. A nursery for baby sharks. It's hard to picture the ocean's top predator as a baby. But we'll have to start somewhere. Unfortunately, these sharks are under threat before they're even born. There's agriculture activities, mainly rice planting, and they're creeping more and more and further into the mangrove swamps. We also have lots of pollution problems, so these mangrove ecosystems are very, very endangered. So what's being done to protect this critical habitat? Nosotros éramos un grupo de mujeres. Ese proyecto, este, nosotros empezamos eh, lo que era este, limpieza de la playa, es la limpieza del manglar, como recolección de botellas, plástico y un poco de todo. Esta zona de aquí es el vivero. Nosotros hemos sembrado casi 8.000 a 9.000 plántulas de 2 kilómetros, que es la área. The women of Chira Island are like coastal custodians, maintaining the mangroves and offering life here a better chance of survival. But newborn sharks aren't the only babies that face threats along the coast. Many sea turtles in this region also get their start on the beaches of Costa Rica. But they face a number of obstacles before they get their flippers wet. In fact, before they even take their first breath. Uh, well, on most of these beaches in Costa Rica, poaching of the eggs is 100%. Uh, locals like to consume the eggs and they sell them, they drink them in bars or whatever. So it's really important that we relocate these eggs into a hatchery where they'll be protected. A hatchery is like a maternity ward for turtles, a safe haven for expecting mothers. And any turtles that are found nesting, the nest is collected and relocated here in this protected area in the hatchery. From here, they're protected also from, not only from poachers, but also from predators like dogs or coyotes, raccoons, or other sorts of wildlife that also live in the area. Once they hatch, they have to hit the ground running and head for the ocean as quickly as possible. But even when, or if, they reach the ocean, the chances of survival for these tiny creatures is slim. It's estimated that once these turtles reach the water, possibly like one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Imagine the odds, a thousand to one, and that's when times were good. Now, it's even harder. No, that's, that's part of the magical thing about it. Just, this has been going on for so many million years. And it has worked. It's not until the last couple of decades that, you know, we're, we're interfering with this process. Those that do beat the odds, that do survive this first step, will travel hundreds of kilometers to places like the Galapagos and Cocos Island. Survival in the animal kingdom has always been a struggle. Yet, sharks and turtles have persevered long enough to outlive the dinosaurs. By protecting these critical habitats, we can give these little animals better odds. A chance to grow up, grow strong, to even have babies of their own and continue the cycle of life in the vast and mysterious open ocean.